Hello and welcome back. So, one more for the night. Let's set up, or let's adjust our menu, our player HUD, so that it'll shift sizes depending on if we're in single player or multiplayer mode. So, first thing uh, in the player blueprint, the player base blueprint, we can actually adjust this update cams for co op thing. We can streamline this a little bit so I'm gonna delete that branch and one of the set nodes I'm gonna hook directly into this one and then from the float I'm going to get a select float and then we can just plug this boolean directly into this and then for the A I'll set it to 250 and then B is 325 and then that kinda cuts down on that a little bit So, looks a little bit nicer. So now over in the player HUD widget, we'll get this size box and set it back to the 1920 default. But with the size box selected, let's rename that, or I'm just gonna delete that so that it just says size box, and I'm gonna set this as a variable. Now in the graph, I'm going to create a custom event called update size. Update size. And I'm going to grab that size box out and I'm going to get num local player controllers. And then, sort of similar to what we're doing over in the blueprint, I'm going to get a greater than one. And then from this size box, we are going to set width override. And then similar to the other thing, we can just call a select float. Plug this boolean in here. And if we are greater than one, as in we've got two players, then we want the half size. So 1920 divided by two or 960. And then for the B is 1920. Now we'll call this function right after we update the cams. We can just get this HUD reference and update size. So now single player fits like it should. Multiplayer fits like it should. Although I did make the menu a little bit big, but it'll be all right. So now let's get that menu off screen. So I'm going to go to my inventory canvas and I'm going to set its visibility to hidden by default. I'm going to set that the inventory canvas is a variable and then inside our graph we'll create a custom event. I'll zoom in and this will be open slash close menu and it will take an input of a boolean b open so what we want to do is we will get this inventory canvas and we want to set its visibility we can't do a select float but we can do a select oops so if we plug this boolean into the index wildcard right here we can it'll automatically convert for us so if it's false then we want it hidden but if it's true we want it visible now let's go into the project settings and under the input mapping we'll create a new action mapping this will be menu or inventory or stash or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it menu. Mine is going to be M on the keyboard and for the controller I'm going to use the start button or what is this called? Uh, options. They call it the options button now but Unreal Engine calls it special right. So this is the start button or 
they used to be start and select. I don't know. I'm probably showing my age, but we'll just use that. So now inside our player base blueprint, we can call our menu action event. You want to make sure it's the action event. We will create a new variable called B menu open. And on press, we want to get this and we'll do a branch. So if it's not open, then we want to set that it is open. And if it is open, then we want to set that it is now not open. Now when we're opening it, we're going to do we're going to do some other stuff later on when we get to setting up the controller input because we'll need to set it to where one player can use a mouse and keyboard to interact with their inventory and then the other play player can use the gamepad. Um, I'm going to show you both methods that way you know how to combine it if you need to uh, and then you can pick one and do it the same way for both players if you got two controllers or what, what have you. But for right now we will just do get our HUD reference Oop. we'll move that over here so let's get player controller we'll plug in our player index and we want to set input mode game and UI and then the widget we want to focus in is our HUD reference. And then up here we will set input mode game only. So when we're closing the menu we're going back to game only and when we're opening it we're going to set our input mode to game and UI so we can interact with it. So after we do that, we can call our open close menu widget. We'll just plug both of these in for right now, that'll be fine. We'll be making tweaks to this later on in order to show the mouse cursor for one player and then etc etc. But we will just plug in this menu open widget or boolean <laughs> into that return. So now that's opening and that's opening. Oop, let's see. So that's working on that character. That's working on that character. All right, so this one felt like it was pretty quick. Yeah, so let's update one more thing real quick. We'll go into our interaction and in the data table. Since we imported this uh, craft resources icons, we can go ahead and update these textures. So let's see. Meat for the steak. I'm going to use this one. I'll just set that here and then for the health potion which might change later on but for now this will work I'm just gonna put that texture there oh when you update the data table if you come out here and check it and get concerned like why isn't it working just select all of them and uh, move them around. Since it's on the construction script, it has to either be recompiled or just moved. And then, yeah, there it goes. I grabbed the wrong health potion picture. There it is. Not that that other one looked bad. But I like... <laughs> I did the same thing. Yeah. 
There it goes. That yeah, looks better. All right. So in the next one, we'll start setting up uh, how to get the buttons interactable for each player. So I will see y'all in a bit, or <laughs> in a few, in a day. <laughs> Bye.